We appreciate Sharon for leading us and organizing our church. Happy first day of spring. Amen. Can you just tell the person next year, we made it to spring. <laughs> Amen. A beautiful day. And I don't know about you, I can't think of a better way to start a new season than in the house of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Will you please tell the person next to you, new season. Everybody say, same Jesus. Come on, shout it out. Same Jesus. Amen. Amen. Same Jesus. Why don't we appreciate Pastor Ariel and Pastor Chris for leading our church last Sunday. Can we give them a shout out? Thank God. So proud of our team. Well, thank you. I had the opportunity. To, my wife and I were represented Charisma to go to the, to the co Church Multiplication Network in Houston, Texas. Uh, you know, everything is big in Texas, right? I've never seen big, big, big church in, in my life until I went to Texas. And we were like 3,000 pastors all over America and we present charisma. So we were inspired, recharged. And then after that, we took on a short break. So I'm excited for this new season. Uh, we are studying the book of Revelation. How many of you are excited about the book of Revelation? Come on, somebody. Amen. There's no greater time to study the book of Revelation, because we are now in the last of the last days, as we are seeing with the wars in Ukraine, uh, the inflation, and all this threat of, of nuclear war and stuff. Like, wow, it's in the Bible. That's why we're not uh, we're not surprised. We're not to be panicking. We just need, oh, wow, it's in the Bible. So God gave us a handle how to navigate this. It's all in the book of Revelation. Let us be uh, rewinding right now to keep you up to up to. Uh, the same page. If you miss some of our preaching, we're doing chapter by chapter. Go to YouTube or go to our Facebook channel, Charisma Seattle. So God gave a vision to John about the end of the world. How will this end? We know this world will end one day. So did you know there's only two people in the New Testament who went to heaven before they die? That's a special privilege. God took them to heaven, gave them a vision of heaven. One is Apostle Paul. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 said, I had a, a vision of the third heaven. He went to the third heaven. That's the place of God. That's where God lives. And Paul says, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what God is in storing for his children. Imagine this. Heaven is a beautiful place. Amen. But Paul was not able to write it because God told him, don't write it. The next person who went to heaven is John, the beloved he went to heaven, and God told him, write the book. This is the vision of heaven and the book of Revelation. So first is God wants to warn his people. So he asked him to write to the seven churches in Asia Minor. Last fall, Emerson and I went to visit all of the ruins of the seven churches in Turkey. It happened to be in Turkey nowadays. So write from chapter 1 to chapter 3, letters to the church, and then after that, we know the church was raptured, taken up to heaven. And then God gave him a vision of heaven. Chapter 4 and chapter 5, I call this hello from the other side, a sneak preview of heaven. John saw heaven, there's a center, and there's a throne. And the one sitting there is called the Lamb. And the people are crying out and shouting and singing, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. To receive glory and honor and power is a picture of worship in heaven. And after that, chapter 6 to 18 is the worst of the worst, the great tribulation. If you look at the next slide, this is going to be heavy, church. Every time I study then, sometimes I will pause and I will cry, God, this is what's going to happen to the end of the world. This is what the people are going to experience. And yes, it's in the Bible. So here's the timeline. Jesus came. He died. And he rose again, and he ascended to heaven. As he was going up, he sent the Holy Spirit, day of Pentecost, birth of the church. Everybody say, we are in the church age. Everybody say, church age. We are now in the church age. And then the rapture will take place. One of these days will be taken up, going to heaven. And then the beginning of trouble. Seven years of hell on earth. And after that, Jesus is coming again. 
This time, He will touch down on earth. The first coming of Jesus in rapture will just meet Jesus in the air. The dead in Christ will rise first, and those who are alive will meet Jesus in the air. The second time Jesus is coming is after tribulation. He will face the devil, and He will conquer him. And then Jesus will set His kingdom for 1,000 years. 1,000 years since millennium. There will be only, the only time there will be peace on earth is during this 1,000 years. Because the one who is seated on the throne is Jesus Christ. Amen? And we get to reign with Jesus on earth. And after that, Satan will be judged to the lake of fire, hell. And then the ending, we all live happily ever after the new heaven and the new earth. So chapter 6 of chapter of Revelation to 18 is one of the worst moments or seasons in the history of mankind. Jesus said this, In this world, you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Would you read this together? One, two, three. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome. Could somebody say Amen. Amen. Jesus, everybody shout, Jesus wins. Jesus wins. Now, I want to ask you right now, wear your thinking cap. Do you think we're living now in the great tribulation? What's happening in Russia, in Ukraine, the inflation, the rumors of war? Do you think this is it? God says, in this world, you will have tribulation. But thank God. Thank you, prophet on point. You're on point. The tribulation is different from the great tribulation. Here is what Matthew 24, 12 says. Everybody read this together. For then there will be a... So it will be in the future. An equal from beginning of the world until now. Wow. And never to be equal again. If you think what's happening in Ukraine is worse, Wait. When the great tribulation happens, I think all hell will break loose. So I googled this, the worst moments in history. And there's a lot of worst moments in history, and they came up with seven or eight. For me, the worst moment in history, whenever there's a war, when people are fighting and killing each other, we are created in the image of God and we're taking the life of other human beings because of war. World War I. And then right after that, it was followed by another war. How many of you are World, world War II veteran? Come on, somebody. We have some people here who've been there. And then after that, the Holocaust. You know what happened during the Holocaust when one dictator by the name Adolf Hitler was so possessed with hatred toward one human race called the Jewish people and one annihilate them in the face of the earth called the Holocaust. And then in the 14th century, we have the Black Plague. One-fourth of Europe died during the Black Plague. It's a pandemic, worse than COVID. It's called the Black Plague. And then how many of you are alive during 1945? The atomic bombing of Hiroshima, right? And then now, we could call this COVID pandemic one of the worst. And also recently, a few weeks ago, when Russia invades Ukraine. And after that, Another worst moment in history is when this guy left. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just pray. Father, forgive him, for he doesn't know what he's doing. Lord, save him from his craziness. My hermano, in Jesus' name, amen. The beginning of the end of Seattle Seahawks. But that is not worse compared to the great revelation prophesied by Jeremiah. Jeremiah saw this in, thousands of years ago. Listen to what Jeremiah said. Cries, read, read me, me charisma. Cries of panic are being heard. The peace has been shattered. Faces contorted. Pale as death. The blackest of days. A black plague, this is the blackest of days. No day like it ever. A time of deep trouble for Jacob, which means for Israel. Jeremiah saw that happen. 
God gave him a glimpse of the great revelation. And Prophet Daniel warned us too. Listen to what Daniel said. Daniel 12, 11. There will be a time of much trouble. Worst time since the nation have been on earth. How, how all these nations been on earth? 2,000 years? Now there will be a trouble. Worst time since the nation have been on earth. So I want you to see the timeline. So after the rapture, look at the slide. Uh, show, can you, the next slide, please. The church will be gone. And seven judgment will come progressive, successive. First, it's called the seven seals. And then the seven trumpets. And then the last is the seven bowls. Imagine this. Seven judgments, boom, seven seals. Followed by the trumpet, boom. And then the bowls, like the, the ultimate judgment is being poured out on this earth. That is Revelation chapter 6 to 18. So the title of the message today, The Great Revelation, The Beginning of the End. If you look at the next slide, The Beginning of the End. Now, in order for us to understand the book of Revelation, don't read it literally because you will be confused. There will say, Tars will fall on earth. If you take that literally, the earth will... will, 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 will will be shattered. Do you know the star is bigger than the earth? So it's a symbol. It's like a leader, a star falling. A person who is famous now, no longer. Sometimes we see that, right? Look at the stars parading in Hollywood. They're telling the superstars. So don't take that literally. So in order for you to understand this, we must think in symbol. I want to show some symbols here. Tell me what it represents. What's a blue donkey? Come on, tell me. Come on. It's not debate. It's just discussion. What's the blue donkey? Democrat. What's the red elephant? Is, there, is that literal? Do you, have you seen a red elephant? So the blue donkey means blue state. Is Washington red state or blue state? Blue. Texas, red. Florida. So this divides us as Americans with these two parties, the blue donkey and the red elephant. So... Now the seal was open. Then after that, four horsemen came out. That's why this is called the four horsemen of Revelation. The judgment begin now. Now this is now the beginning of the end. I want you to stand up on your feet, Charisma, because we're going to read this word for word in the scripture. Would you please read this with me, Charisma? Revelation chapter 6, we need to know the Bible so we'll know the truth. One, two, three. I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I look and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering and to conquer. Verse 3 and 4. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come. And out came another horse, bright red. Its rider was permitted to take peace from the earth. So the people should slay one another. And it was given a great sword. Verse 5. Come, I look up and saw what? A black horse. And its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice from among the four living beings say, A loaf of wet bread or three loaves of barley will cost a day's pay. You can now be seated. So now we see here the first creature that John saw, a white horse. How many of you love Western movie? You know, in Western movie, the guy riding the white horse is the, the good guy, right? John Wayne, right? When the guy who rides on the white horse means there'll be peace on this town. So at first, follow me, Charisma. This guy riding on a white horse is going to bring peace, but he's an imposter. It's a fake news. And at first, we might think this is Jesus Christ. This is not Jesus. This is the replica of Jesus called the Antichrist. I'm telling you, the devil is, has, has no creativity. He just want to copy God and become like God and deceive a lot of people. Let's read this together, Charisma. Come and see, and I look, behold, the white horse... He who sat on it had everybody bow and a crown was given to him, 
and he went out conquering and to conquer. What is really uh, strange here, whenever there's a bow, there must be what? An arrow, right? Bow and arrow. This is no arrow. So it's like a person deceiving, I came here on, in peace. I'm not, I don't have an arrow. I came here to negotiate, to have a peace on earth. And then he's wearing a crown. But later on, he said, he went out conquering and to? So it's fake news, right? He's pretending, I'm going to have peace. Believe me, I'm a good politician, a ruler. But later on, he will show his true color. It's like, remember back a few weeks ago, we, don't, we were all wearing masks. Now we've been unmasked. How many of you like to see those beautiful faces nowadays, right? Come on, somebody. Now, here's the thing. Bow represents peace, but no arrow. So this is a deception. This is the false messiah. Everybody say false messiah. Now, the word crown, follow me, church. There's only two Greek words. When I say Greek words, the original language of the Bible in the New Testament is Greek. Old Testament is Hebrew. What you're reading right now is translation in English. So in order for you to know the meaning, go back to the original words. There are two Greek words for crown. Everybody say stepanos. Everybody say diadema. So this guy on the white horse wearing a crown, but it's not diadem. Diadem is the royal crown, the kingly crown. That's in Revelation 19, Jesus Christ is going to wear that. The crown is laurel lift. It's like an athlete in Greece. You know, a few weeks, two years ago, during our 25th wedding anniversary, we went to Greece. And so we were looking at the ancient culture, and then I want to buy a laurel leaf. And you know what the guy said? You want to buy a stepanos? So I wanted to see what's a, a stepanos. That's a stepanos. That's a laurel leaf, and that is Miss Charisma 2022. <laughs> but Jesus will be wearing a diadema. Revelation 19, Jesus is coming on a white horse, but he's the real hero. Everybody read it together. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called who? Faithful and true. And on his head were many crowns. He was clothed with a robe deep in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the... Who are the armies in heaven? Those are the Christians who went to heaven and we're going to come back here on earth with Jesus. Tell the person next to you, I see you. I see you in heaven. Come on, somebody. Amen. We're going to come down back on earth together with Jesus Christ and face the Antichrist. And of course, Jesus says, will, 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 is the Antichrist no much to Jesus and then the enemy will be locked up in hell forever. It's a no, no contest. But I want you to see here in chapter 6, the white horse, bow, crown, and then later on, conquer and conquering, that is the Antichrist. The word Antichrist means anti, against. Are you anti, anti Seahawks, anti, an, anti uh, Pittsburgh, right? An, an, anti uh, vaccine, uh, pro vax, against. But it's also meaning instead of. Antichrist also means if you don't accept Jesus, you accept the counterfeit. It's the Antichrist. For example, if I would like to fool you, I would like to make a $20 bill, I want to make it so real. I don't, I don't want to put the face of Obama there or Donald Trump because you right there and there you will know it's a fake $20 bill. I will put the face of Andrew Jackson dead center, because that's the face of $20 bill. So here is, G here is Antichrist, the devil, pretending to be Jesus, riding on a white horse, but he is the big bad wolf. Look at the names of the Antichrist. He is called the man of lawlessness, the abomination, and the beast. It refers to one person. Now, did you know when Jesus was here on earth, he was confronting his people. He prophesied. Because if you go to Israel today, sad to say, Jesus was born there, but they rejected Jesus. Until now, they're waiting for a Messiah. Listen to what Jesus told his people. I have come in my Father's name and with his power, 
and you do not receive me because your minds are closed. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him and give your approval to what? An imposter. So Jesus warned them already. They will come a time to pretend to be me and you will receive him, but watch out. He's an, a fake news. He's an imposter. And this is what the Antichrist will do. Everybody read this together. 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 4. Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs, and the man of lawlessness is? That is the Antichrist. The man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over that, that is called God and his worship, and he sets himself up in God's temple. That's the difference with Jesus Christ, right? We honor Jesus Christ with our worship. This one, he elevated himself and called to be God. Everybody say God's temple. God. Where is God's temple? Jerusalem. Jerusalem right? That's the, the, the context here. But what do you see in the God's temple right now? The last remaining part of the temple is this, called the Western Wall. You've been to Jerusalem 24-7. 24-7, there will be hundreds and thousands of people banging their head on the wall, praying and calling on God, regardless of your belief or religion, because they believe that is the most holy place on earth. That is the last remaining temple of God. It was destroyed in 8070. So what we see here is just a wall. Dignitaries will go there. Prince Charles, uh, our former president, they will go to that place. And now they're waiting for a time to rebuild the temple. So when the Antichrist comes, he will make peace on earth. What's the problem in today in the world? World peace. Remember President Zelensky calling out Biden. Come on, Mr. President, step up to the plate. You're the leader of the world, the free world. So there will be a politician, a person, will solve this problem of war. And the world will embrace him. He's a nice guy. He's riding a white horse, a man of peace. But later on, three and a half years, he will show his true colors. There will be carnage and devastation on earth. To prove to you today, all of the requirement to, build, to rebuild the temple is already prepared. Inside the temple, there will be a golden menorah. Look at this. That is pure gold. It's publicly displayed in the streets of Jerusalem, guarded by, of course, by, by satellites, I would call by, by, by cameras. I saw someone, Israeli soldier, there, looking there. <laughs> and then I saw a couple taking a picture over there. Oh, I'm going to miss this couple. Come on, somebody, right? Are, there, are you guys here? Can you give me give honor to this couple who, who pioneered our church? I'm going to miss them so badly. So what I'm trying to say is, Wow. It's ready. So then the temple will be rebuilt. And then Antichrist will step up then. And then he will unmask himself. I'm God. And then he will declare war on this earth and devastation. So the first horse is a fake news, a false messiah. His name is Antichrist. John MacArthur said this in a quote. The world's desperate desire for the international peace will serve as the bait for the satanic trap. The hands of Antichrist, Satan's ruler, who will convince the world, he can provide for them. Jesus warned us. Pastor Chris mentioned that last Sunday, Matthew 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered them, See that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. And then... He will lead many astray. So after the white horse, John saw another horse coming. This time it's a red horse with a sword. To him who sat on the red horse, a great sword was given to him. What is the meaning of the bright red? It said its rider was permitted to take peace from the earth. So after first three and a half years of peace on earth, and then... Antichrist, da da, I'm the big bad wolf. He declared war, World War III, Battle of Armageddon, where we, that, that'll be come to, that will be in the future. It's, just, it's not just a movie, it's really literally there's a World of Armageddon that will happen, and it will be in Revelation 16, and they will slay one another. So th that is war. First is deception, 
Second is dissension. I always preach in letter, start with the same letter so I won't forget. I'm ADD. So dissension means war. And remember what Jesus said. You will hear wars and rumors of wars. Then yellow said, nation will rise against nation. So what's a red horse? In the book of Revelation, follow me, red represents color of terror and bloodshed. In Revelation chapter 6, it's a red dragon, but it's the same. It's the same person. So a few months, weeks ago, three weeks ago to be exact, right after the Olympics, you know, China and Russia, they're buddy-buddy, right? They're BFF. The president of China asked Putin, don't attack Ukraine during the Winter Olympics. We don't want to be, have war during Olympics. Right after the Olympics, have you noticed the timing? Right after the Olympics, a day after the Olympics, Russia invades Ukraine. And now they're talking about chemical weapons. Let me give you a short, brief history. If you're alive during the July of 1945, you could Google it, you could see this in YouTube. The first A bomb was tested in New Mexico. It was July 16, 1945. America detonated, tested the atomic bomb. And after three weeks, President Truman ordered the bombing of Hiroshima. Look at this. One atomic bomb disseminated, flattened the entire city put it to ground zero, that's one atomic bomb. You know how much powerful a nuclear weapon is? 34,000 times powerful than any TNT, at any bomb. And I Googled this Center for Defense Information, it's public knowledge. As of 2021, you know who has the most atomic uh, nuclear bomb? Nuclear weapons, Russia has 6,000 to 57 followed by us, 5,600, China is number three, France, United Kingdom, Pakistan, India, Israel, small country, but there's 90 nuclear, why? Because they have to protect themselves. The point is this, we have the capability to banish planet Earth in less than one hour if they use those nuclear weapons. And in the great tribulation, the, the red horse will be the mother of all wars. And after the war, what happened? Because imagine bombing the factories, the infrastructure, the supermarket, the hospital. There will be famine. There will be food shortage. War is not enough. After that, the Bible says, come and see. You know, if I were John, I would say, I don't want to see anymore. God told him, come and see. Then I look, a black horse. The black horse is holding a pair of scale. What's a pair of scale? Weigh, measure. And the Bible says this, I heard a loud voice among the four living creatures and a loaf of bread or three loaves of barley will cost a day's pay. So the black horse represents, as you look at this picture, it has a, it's, a, it's a, a picture with a weighing scale. Look at the next line. It says here, a pair of scales in his hands. What's that? Inflation. Price gouging. It's famine. Lack of supplies. The black horse represents famine and economic collapse. It's going to happen, church. Look at the price of the gas right now. $6 something. You know, Richard went to Lake Stevens and put gas, and then he was a little bit uh, crazy and funny. He said, I look at this, Kuya. Somebody put a sticker on the price of the, at the gasoline station, the picture of Biden. I did that. <laughs> and I asked Richard, are you sure? Or maybe you're the one who put that sticker. I was kidding him. It's going to be worse. Look at our stock market. It will collapse one day, church. One day. So don't put your hopes too much on those things of this world. Right after that, what happened next? The higher interest rate ahead of us. So what's the problem now is food insecurity. Three million refugees right now in Ukraine. 
I'm just so thankful. We in the assemblies of God, whenever there's a calamity, you, there is already hope is on the way. Aren't you thankful for Convoy of Hope? We have two, we have more than three, as I said, three warehouses in Poland and, and, and they're shipping medical supplies, Virgin Atlantic, uh, allowing Convoy of Hope to use their airplane for free and we're sending relief there. And I'm so proud to tell you, Charisma, Two weeks ago, we raised an offering for Convoy Hope for Crane Crisis. We raised $8,000. Give it up for Jesus through you. Thank you for your generosity. You know, while I was in Texas and hearing all this report, I saw our truck driver there. He said, her name is uh, Roberta. And I said, James, Pastor James, pick me, pick me. Because she always wants to travel from Springfield to Washington. Because when they were the travel here, we treat them nice. We book them to a hotel. So I called the convoy of office. They're there. And I'm just asking, you know what? We're also suffering in Washington. There's also inflation here. So mark it down your calendar. August 6th. Come on, somebody. We will have a convoy of hope park here. We're going to bless this community with more than 10,000 pounds of food. Give it up for Jesus. Come on, somebody. What I'm trying to point is this. While the world is coming to the end, the church is showing up on the street and bringing the hope of Jesus Christ. Come on, church. It's not time for us to shut up. It's time for us to get up and be on par for the Lord and love people to Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Come on, if you want to love Jesus more, come on, give it up to Him. I'm excited. I know we're in the last of the day. I'm excited. And then after that, it's not the end yet. Another horse came out. And now it's pale, like it's sick. When the lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature come. I looked there before me was a pale horse. The rider is named Death and Hades. Wow. Imagine death and hell. Wow. What a bad partnership. Death and hell riding on this horse to kill with a sword, plague, and by the wild beast. It's like pestilence, pandemic, and beast. Right? And when you bomb this earth and there's, there's nuclear radiation, imagine the, the pestilence, imagine the pandemic that will happen on this earth. We have a preview of that. We call it COVID-19. But that's nothing. You know the black plague during the 14th century is a pandemic caused by bubonic plague. Can I ask you this first before we show this picture, the next picture? Stop for a moment. Do you know what's the most destructive creature on earth? The most destructive creature on earth. Do you know what it is? Rats. Black plague is caused by rat-borne diseases. They're prolific. They, they multiply. Imagine if all these wild beasts will be roaming on this earth. There will be famine. There will be pestilence. And I'm telling you, wow. While I was preparing this, I was crying to God. God gave me this strength, oh God, to preach this. And also to warn people. To get right or get left. The only way out of tribulation is to have Jesus come again and take us to be with heaven. Amen, somebody. We don't want to be left behind here on earth. Now, why we believe the rapture will happen before the great tribulation? Here's the promise of Jesus. Everybody read this with me. Revelation 3.10. Everybody read this. Because you have obeyed my command to persevere. I will protect you. Ask your question. Did God say I will protect you in the great tribulation or from the great tribulation? Everybody say from. What's the difference between in and from? Give you an example. How many of you have been protected by Jesus from COVID? Meaning to say, you did not get COVID. Come on, raise your hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for the people. Like, people we are so thankful for all of you. How many of you have been preserved by the Lord through COVID? You got COVID and you came out alive. Come on, somebody. I'm one of those survivors. But God's promise, not in, but from. Amen? Meaning you will escape the great tribulation. That will happen Upon the whole world. Listen to the promise of God. First Thessalonians 1.11 And to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead. That is Jesus, who, what? Rescue us in or from? 
from the wrath. The word wrath there is the great tribulation to come. Why? Here's the reason why. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, church. Can I just tell you this? This should fire our hearts Knowing that one day Jesus is coming soon, we want to get ready and be living a life of holiness. Come on, somebody. Because Jesus is coming for his bride. Amen. The church is the bride of Christ. What does a bride do before the wedding day? You go to the David's bridal, try on those uh, gown, and if it doesn't fit, Change of plan. Go, uh, go extra size. And if it doesn't fit, go to the gym. Because you want to be ready when the day comes. You'll be walking on that wide, beautiful gown. You're preparing yourself. You're contacting the, 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 the makeup artist. You're, you're preparing because that's your grand day. Jesus' rapture is God is coming for his bride, the church. Do you think we should prepare to become beautiful in the sight of God? Come on, somebody, by being pure. Come on, somebody, by being holy for God. Come on, church. Just being prepared. Here's my personal takeaway. As we consider this preview of judgment to come, we should allow these future events to impact the way we live in our present today. Knowing that all of these things we will leave behind, all of these things that we think is... Important, but one day will be leave it all behind, and you you will rearrange your perspective. You will invest your money not just for the things of this world, but invest and that last for eternity for, for 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 the souls of men. Come on, somebody. I like what Billy Graham said: We are to wait for the coming of Christ with patience. We are to watch with anticipation. We are to work with zeal. We are to prepare with urgency. The scripture says Christ is coming when you are least expecting him. Coming as a thief. And he said, be prepared. Get ready to prepare to meet thy God. I'm pleading, church. I'm telling you, I'm crying when I'm studying this. Because just the, the picture of this is, wow. And then you look at what's happening to Ukraine. That is not comparable to these blackest days on earth. Called the Great Tribulation. When all hell will break loose on earth. I'm pleading for you. You have two choices, and I ask you to choose only one. Antichrist will promise peace, but deliver war. Jesus Christ promises peace, and he is the Prince of Peace. The next one, Antichrist brings famine and depression. Jesus Christ is the bread of life. Could somebody say amen, somebody? Antichrist brings death and hell. Jesus Christ gives eternal life and heaven. Who do you choose? Choose Jesus. And just give me Jesus. That is my best escape from this world. It's not joining this church. church. It's not about religion. It's a relationship. And you know, the best time for you to, to give your life to Jesus is now. In the next two weeks, we will have this race to life. This is not about joining this church. It's about when you accept Jesus Christ, he commands you to, to be baptized. What's the meaning of baptism? Go under the water. It's a symbol of your life is dead and gone. And then look at Sister Asha, alive in Christ in Jesus' name. It's not joining this church. It's about wearing your collar, wearing your team. If you have not obeyed the Lord yet, I'm pleading you. As your pastor and friend, do it now while we have a chance. So I ask you if you, this, if you have not done that or you want to recommit your life to Jesus, uh, April 3, that's, a, that's a, one of the holy weeks and that is preparing for Easter. Put your name there on your connection card in the bulletin and put your, call, your, your T-shirt uh, size so we'll provide you the new shirt. It's the only way out except Jesus. And being baptized in water is publicly. Why do I need to do it publicly? Jesus died publicly on the cross. And he's calling us out to represent him today. You know, this week has been a lot of 
emotional memory lane stroll for me. I was in Houston, just honored by the Lord to represent our church. And the first time I heard that song, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you've been so, so good to me. With every breath that I'm able, I'll sing of the goodness. And the Lord reminded me of my past. Horrific, black, ugly, sinful. And how the Lord has picked me up and called me to be a pastor now. Going to places, places that I've never thought I, I will go. You know that this coming October, your pastor will be preaching in the entire Europe for the conference. And wherever I go, I represent Jesus. Come on, somebody. Next June, your pastor, Sharon, will be preaching for our California convention. I'm saying, God, I'm not supposed to be there. I'm not educated enough. I'm not good enough. But all this paper that you're giving me, I don't have a master's degree, but did you know I got to teach in a master's class at Northwest University? What I'm trying to say, God, all that I am seeing right now before my eyes, this opportunity to travel, to speak the word, to, to be partnered with Convoy Hope, to not to speak to the European Christian in, 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 in Rome, it's all because of your favor. No. Do you believe in the favor of God? Do you believe you could attract the favor of God? Uh, do you know that your, that your pastor has the favor of God? I believe that. You know, the other night, I went to work out with my friend. And my friend shocked me with this thing. Hey, I don't have a ride. Take me home. It was raining hard. So I took this brother home. And on the way back to his home is, there was a blue light shining behind me not the glory of the lord not the blue light special at kmart woo, 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 woo. i got caught again pulled over by the police and then the police said why are you driving so fast and i said sorry sir the battery of my car is under 20 <laughs> percent i need to drive faster to get home Give me your license registration and give me your insurance card. And I don't have my insurance. So I called my wife, Sharon, please text me the insurance. And this police went back and came back after 15 minutes. And he said, drive carefully, sir. Tell the person next to you, he has the favor of God. Come on, somebody. I tell you, I have so many stories like that. What I'm trying to say, if you believe in the favor of God, you attract the favor of God. If you only believe negative, bad things will happen to you, you're attracting that. Why don't we believe that the goodness of the Lord is running after you? Come on, somebody. The goodness of the Lord wants to catch you. The goodness of the Lord wants to surprise you. So while they're singing this song, I cry like a baby. You know, when we bought the warehouse, we list it and then we... We, 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 we had our renovated and then we don't have money. We, we, have, we raise money for the carpet. Remember the Graffiti Sunday? I call it Graffiti Sunday. Let's write names of our loved ones here. It's a cement. There's no carpet. Prayer requests for your family of people that you memory burst. And I know every Sunday I'll be standing here dead center. And I know this will be my spot. And the only words I wrote there, God with big sharpie is so good to remind myself whatever I do whatever I accomplish in my life it's only because of the goodness of God it's only because God is so good come on somebody when you get to heaven it's not because you go to church it's not because you give it's not because of what you have done. It's only because of what Jesus has done for us. It will be only by the grace of God and the goodness of God. And I want to prophesy this over you, Charisma. While the world is getting darker, it's getting worse, the people of God will rise above. Come on, somebody. And you will experience the goodness of the Lord. I want you to stand up on your feet today.
Hallelujah. We're going to sing this song. Make this the story of your life. Forget about the time, church. Let's just sit and zone in and worship Jesus right now. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice I love your voice you have led me through the fire And all my days I've been held in your hands I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God In all my life you have been faithful Oh yes, you are God In all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made Come on church, get ready The goodness of the Lord is running of the Running after you, not to give you a ticket Not to punish you but to bless you, your goodness, your goodness is so running after, it's running after me. Come on, get ready, church. Your, your goodness, goodness is running after. It's gonna catch you. It's gonna catch you with surprise. It's gonna catch you with this favor. Hallelujah. He knows your name. He knows where you are. Get ready. He knows where you are. What you're going through. Your goodness is running. Running, running out, come on, let's me. sing it again. Your goodness, your goodness, your, your goodness, goodness is running out. It's running, running out to me. Here I am, Jesus. Your, your goodness, goodness is running out. It's running, running out to me. With my life laid down, down I'm surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Let's raise our hand all my life. And all my life you have been faithful. If that is true, sing it to him. Sing it to him. And all my life you have been so, so We've been unfaithful, good. but God is always faithful. With every breath that and I, I am in. Just the people, can we lift our hands? Those of you online, worship Him, type it in, all my life. Oh, Jesus loves to hear that. Sing it out. I will sing. Of the goodness Oh, I could sing that over and over again I will sing Of the goodness That is the story of my life It's all because of His goodness Of the goodness Of God And oh I'm running to Your arms Run 
to Jesus. His arms is open to embrace you, to love on you, to forgive you, to give you a second chance. To your embrace, light of the world. Come on, church. Our only safety is in the arms of Jesus. I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world. Let's declare it today. Jesus, you are good. 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 When there's nothing good in me, you are love. You are love. I'll display for all to see. You are light. You are light. When the darkness comes again, you are hope. church run to jesus his hands are open up for you arms are open wide to receive you i'm running and oh i'm running to your arms jesus embrace your people today the riches of your comfort those who are lonely and sad All my life, all my life. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. And I will sing of the goodness. Sing that every day I will sing the goodness. With our hands lifted up, church, it's not ritual, it's not magic, it's not religion, it's just identifying. I'm in Jesus, I belong to you, Lord. I choose you. Would you pray this prayer with me, dear Jesus? I know one of these days. This world will come to an end, but I am not afraid because you said you have overcome the world. I am not of the world. I am in the Lord, my Savior, my Lord, my God. Here is my life, Jesus. All of the goodness of this life is only because you are good we don't deserve it but we receive it by faith and by grace forgive us for our unfaithfulness thank god you're always faithful ready to bless forgive and to give us a second chance now lord here's my life i give it back to you i embrace you jesus I renounce you, devil. My life belongs to Jesus Christ. I accept you, Lord, as my Lord and Savior. 
and give me the courage to stand up for Jesus to tell the world out there that you are a good, good God that your goodness is running after me I have the favor of God I will live in the favor of God I will experience greater favor of God because God is so good and all of God's people said would you give Jesus a clap of praise today come on Thank <laughs> you.